Hello and welcome to a new video on a game known as The Operator. Now this is something completely different to what I'd normally do on this channel, you know, it's not zombie related at all. In this game, we are joining the FDI as their newest operator. Our role is to use our detective skills to assist field agents and investigate mysterious crimes. By doing this, we're using cutting edge FDI software to dig for the clues, solve puzzles and uncover the truth. Now, I'm horrific at puzzle games. I've never played this game at all before. I'm going in completely cold. So I feel like this is going to be an incredibly painful adventure. And you guys are going to have to sit here and suffer with me. And <laughs> let's just see how this goes. Answer my questions as usual. One oh. for yes, two for no. Do you understand? No, not really. Do you believe in extraterrestrial life? Are you married? Do you know who I am? Do you know who you are? Is it embarrassing that I've already forgotten which one's yes and which one's no? Are you? No, oh, there's no need to call me that. Good. He's ready. Okay, that was a very intense beginning. Ooh, okay. Um, do I have to come up with my own username? Um, ah, uh, wait, what? Oh, it doesn't matter what I type, it, it decides the name for me. So let me just, okay, that's going to have to do. That does not seem like a very secure password for the government, I'll be honest. Trash, that's where I belong. Oh, fuck. Okay, we've got a little welcoming document. Um, okay. Oh, this is a lot of reading. I don't know if I can be bothered with this. Okay, so how this is going to work. Agent's going to call the hotline. Uh, the call gets dispatched. Request forwarded to the supervisor. Supervisor dispatches. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Lots of information. Oh, yeah, I've got this. Just let me do some FDIing, please. Oh, uh, I'm going to put you on hold. I'm getting uh, socially awkward. I'm too anxious to open the phone. Mike, go away. I don't want to speak. Like my usual job, I'm just going to see out the timer until the end of my day. God, Mike's a little bit persistent. He won't go away. Maybe if I answer, he'll tell me when my first break is. Hey, pal. I hold up. Get all that booze out of here. Sorry, I got pissed before my first day at the FDI. Uh, oh, I get options here. I'm going to pretend like I don't know him. Let's try and confuse him. Let's just pretend that we don't know him. What? You seriously don't remember? You wanted to celebrate your new job, and I quote, ahem, properly. Well, I'm happy you're here. You and me at the FDI together. It's really great, but I gotta tell you something. When we're on the job, I can't treat you differently than anybody else. You understand, right? No. <laughs> I want to be treated better. Oh, I guess uh, let's. I was gonna go for being hostile, but I tell you what, let's just skip straight to being paid. More than your last job, I can tell you that. Well, I'd better run. The FDI can't run itself now, can it? Good luck with your first day. All right. <laughs> Do we really formal and call me Director Trench? And then it'll just act a bit more casual. Let's just be really passive aggressive. Okay. There goes my one friend. Oh, fuck, who are you? Good morning, Mr. Tanner. Welcome to the FDI. I assume you're up to speed on your mission here at the operator program? No, not at all. <laughs> well, as an operator, your goal is to support our agents by providing them with anything they need to solve a case. That help can come in the form of fact checking, video and audio analysis, even lab work. My job as a supervisor is to link the agents with an appropriately matched operator. Any questions? Um, um, God, we're not getting off to a good start. Fine, but first, you need to learn how to respond to an agent's request. Let's do a dry run, shall we? I want you to find my age. Um, this objective just popped up at the top left of your screen, beside the applications menu. See it? Whenever you're stuck, or if you need help, simply click on the question mark next to the objective. Go on and click on the question mark, Tanner. Yeah, I'm already confused. Yes, just like that. You can always click on the question mark if you get stuck, though I'm hoping this won't happen often. I'm giving you access to the human database. The human DB, as we call it here. Now go ahead, Operator Tanner. Solve my request. 
Find my age. Don't tell me what to do, you answer, piece of shit. Click on the objective and then select the answer on the screen. I need more help. Open the human DB and enter my full name, Mr. Tanner. You can find it in the applications menu on the top left of the screen. Um, Once you've found my age, click on the objective and then click again on my age. Um, oh god, I can't ask for help again. Uh, it's, oh, I'm too anxious. Operator, you should find the information first. Don't shout at me! Uh, okay, I've actually not been paying attention, so I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, human DB, here we go. Uh, full name. Oh god, I actually have to spell this time. This is when I'm going to expose myself as being incredibly bad at spelling. Okay, you're born in 1949, and you're 40. That really threw me off. I forgot we're in the 90s. Um... Oh, here we go. I'm slowly getting it. God, I'm a little bit slow for the FBI. Like that, I'll let you get settled in, and I'll contact you later with your first real request. Ooh, I've got his fingerprints. I feel like I can start committing some crimes with him. I mean, yeah, of course, supervisor's getting on perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I feel like he didn't like me. Okay, two hours have passed by. I feel like I've done absolutely nothing. Oh, fuck off! Oh, God, what do you want? Tanner, looks like your first request is somewhat of a baptism by fire. I have an agent working a homicide. It's Ooh. her first case, too. Not ideal, but consider this a learning experience. I'll be monitoring you in the background. Oh, don't micromanage me. I'm sorry, did you say homicide? That's just been an absolute coward. I'm patching the agent through now. God, I'm gonna get fired straight away. Uh, you can wait. Do, 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 do. Let's check my trash. What's this to delete file? Oh, I don't have the password to it. What the hell? Um, uh, what else do I have? Maybe I should read the welcome thing again. You know, oh, lovely. Yeah, nice. Anything else? No, not really seeing anything else. I guess I'll take the phone call now. It's Operator Tanner, right? Yep. I don't think our paths ever crossed at the Academy, eh? Right? Anyway, I got a homicide at a bar downtown called The Sanctuary. Ironic, no? My Vic, dead on arrival. Is male, Caucasian, early 60s. He was shot in the head at close range around 2 a.m. just before closing time. As far as evidence, I got some surveillance footage from the bar and uh, some kind of list that I found on the deceased. Any chance you can work your operator magic and help find me an ID on the shooter? Wait, hold on. Wasn't I out last night and I don't remember going out? I, I mean, I, I, I didn't do it. I didn't kill him. Thanks, operator. Okay, I'm sending over the files. Good luck. Okay, don't send me a virus or anything, please. Okay, what is this? Ooh, okay. Are we gonna witness a murder? Can I put this on YouTube? Oh! This is our cutting edge video analysis system, Tanner. Click on any relevant elements in the video to trigger an analysis. Okay, we'll try the car. Hopefully that will Just get us like a wedge. Just like the video, you can click on a photo for further analysis. Okay, we've got the name of the car. It's Ray Wells. It's not been stolen, okay. Look at this, I'm a genius. Now we know the perp's name. You got something for Wells' address? Because I'll take it if you do. Um, 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 um. <laughs> I can get the distributor. I mean, that's not gonna work, is it? Uh, okay, I'm getting a little bit confused now. That's the list I found on the victim. It's pretty long. And to be honest, I got no idea who any of those people are. The Ooh. bizarre thing is that name at the bottom, it wasn't redacted when I bagged it. But I think it's irrelevant to our shooting here. Oh, yeah, yeah, surely. This is definitely the Epstein flight logs or something. Um, okay, I should have the human database. Okay. God, what was his name again? Ray Wells. Okay, this is our guy. 29. Type 2 skin? What does that mean? Oh, he's a little man. Only weighing 55 kg. Oh, he seems like a stand-up guy. He's only stolen a car and sold some drugs. He seems like someone I'd be friends with. There we go. There's it. What do you mean that's not his address? Oh, that's place of birth. Oh, okay. Yay, I got it. Maybe I should just try reading. That tends to help. It's so goddamn difficult. Yeah, that'll do. Next up is to bring Wells in. I'll keep you updated. Thanks, Operator Tanner. Uh, let's be really patronizing. Yeah, good luck with the arrest. Let's see how you cope without me. Fucking hung up on me. Not bad, Tanner. Not great, but not bad either. I'll contact you later with your I mean, next request. I did a great job. What do you mean? Yeah, what do you mean not bad? No need to worry, operator. You'll improve with time. Fuck you. Oh, I hope I get fired.
Ooh, I've got an email. Okay, most wanted. What is this? We've got this guy for delivering a bomb. Fuck off, I'm reading. Okay, this guy is one of numerous murders. Again, I'm starting to think these suspicious characters. I'm, I'm starting to wonder if that could be us. We clearly have a problem with uh, blacking out and forgetting our nights. Ooh, leader of a cult. Nice. Uh, um, less nice this part, but you know, we keep moving. Can I get some of this reward if I turn them in myself? I want to see if I can get my own financial gain out of this. Tanner. I need you to follow up on an investigation started by a previous operator. I'll let the agent working the case bring you up to speed. I've just noticed, because this file's still here, does this mean that some of these crimes are going to end up linking together and creating like a wider story? Okay, I didn't listen to what he said at all. Uh, who was the operator? That's none of your concern, Tanner. Oh, he's really getting fed up with me. Oh, uh, Barry, here we Oh, hello, Barry. Oh, please, tell me you got something. Uh, well, hello to you too. Give him some sense. God damn it! Who are you? Who am I? Who are you? Fuck you! Great! Every goddamn time we get a new operator, it takes me twice as long. I got a life outside the FDI, you know? Interest, hobbies, full-blooded passions. I don't have time for this. Oh, I wanted to keep being aggressive to him. Ah, uh, tell me about the case. I got a missing persons case out here in Dryfield, Nevada. Connie Moore's her name. I canvassed the area, talked to the locals. I can't believe I'm saying this, but everyone thinks she was abducted by aliens. Over the past year, four people in Dryfield have claimed they've been abducted. And every single time they reappeared somewhere in the middle of the desert out here about a month later. Connie's story's the same. Uh, I thought she was missing. Yeah, hold on. I don't know if I'm just missing the point here. She was. Popped back up yesterday collected her testimony myself. She had a camera on her. Naturally, I like to look at the photos. But I to bet. do that, I gotta go through you, an operator. Oh. Lucky me, right? Oh, maybe I'm the pervert then. There's something off about all this. I mean, beyond all the talk of little green men. Just look for something that doesn't add up, okay? I do not like this guy's attitude. What if I don't find anything? Oh, you will. I'm telling you, I got a nose for this kind of thing. I just can't do it myself because I don't have direct access. The operator program. No combination of words could possibly convey the love I hold for it in my heart. Here are the files. Can I just, like, give him my login details? I'm sure there's nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, testimony. Okay, so Connie Moore, the victim. Okay, can you tell us more about the day you disappeared? I was hiking in the desert out by Dryfield. Sometimes I do that to clear my head or to take photos. Photography is sort of a hobby of mine. I didn't care about your life, Connie. Come on. And is that your camera? Yes, it is. What else do you remember about that day in the desert? Well, it's a little blurry. When I wanted to hike around Mount Mori, I remember that. Oh my god, this is so much to read. Blah, 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 UFO. Blah, 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 too much to read. I, 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 no, I'm, I'm not reading all of this. Yep, cool. Let's just move on to the next part. Phone recording. Oh, do I really have to keep reading this? Okay. So she moved around a fair bit. And what's this on the camera? Static. Ooh, photos. Okay. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, that's the photo I think is problematic. I don't believe in intelligent life outside our planet. I don't believe in intelligent life on our planet. Yep, but I'm certainly not one. Be more specific. We need proof that something's off about the photo. Oh, my brain is too small for this. Um. Connie Moore claims to have taken a photograph of a UFO. If you're of a more rational mind operator, most likely she did not. Your objective is to find a shortcoming or problem with said photograph. Oh, that's boring. Um, go on, yeah, she's talking about drugs here. Oh, fuck off. Focus on the photograph of the UFO operator. Consider looking at the photo's metadata. Maybe that will spark something for you. He's getting so passive aggressive. It's my first day. Give me a break. Ooh, ooh, okay, there's a time here. Okay, I can use that. Okay, if I move this over here. So she disappeared. 327. Oh, brain hurt. What if I select the time here? Oh, okay. I stumbled across uh, the answer. Oh, I, I, di <laughs> I didn't even read the dates. The dates are completely different. 
Jackpot. Connie said she took that photo the day she disappeared. Clearly, she didn't. Maybe the aliens did funny things to her brain. Maybe her brain was funny to begin with. Do me a favor. Locate the position on the map where she supposedly snapped this photograph. Ah, uh, uh, why are you making me do more work? Nope, that's not it. You know the time this particular photo was taken, operator. You also have cell phone data detailing where Connie Moore was and at what time. Now we need to know where she was at the time she took this photo. <sighs> okay, okay, right. What? Here? Here? Oh, okay. My, my brain is just too small for this. Okay, I'm sure the answer is here. Yeah, I thought I clicked that. All right. I'll check this spot out. <sighs> I guess I gotta do a little hiking. Probably sweat my goddamn b b b b b Whoa. Okay, the government software clearly needs an update as it shut down on us. Um, what the hell? Um, okay. Uh, who the heck are you? Okay, I'm, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. You don't have to rub it in. I think we're just going to confront them. What does he mean by this? What are you talking about? Apparently we're not doing our job. I'm doing an excellent job, I'll have you know. Um, yeah, okay, we do have the list. I'm just gonna stay silent. Oh, okay, there's no need to call me out like that. Oh, okay, Connie's on there as well. I, I know so many Connie Moores. Whoa, okay. Did you kick them? I'm just gonna throw the blame at them. Okay, I don't know if I should trust this Hal guy. Okay, he's on about the redacted name. Don't get. Can we beg to find out more? Oh, I'll just play it cool. Yeah, Hal, we'll catch you later. Okay, right, let's log back in. Right. Oh, God, why are we still working at this time? Like, I swear I started at 7 in the morning. What kind of hours am I working here? Operator Tanner, are you there? Agent Walker told me that your connection was suddenly cut. And when I tried to contact you, you were offline. What happened? Uh, taking a big shit. Ooh, do we tell the truth or do you lie? Eh, I'm gonna lie. Hmm, I see. I'll have IT look into that at once. The second shift of operators has arrived. You can go home now, Tanner. See you oh. tomorrow. Okay. And don't be late. Oh, fuck you. I don't like this guy. Right, let's just go. We're going to finish up our first day and switch off. Okay, this is really cool. Like, I love the aesthetic of this game. Okay. We have a depressing life getting on the public transport. Oh, we own a cat. Let me see the cat. Okay, I hope we're not microwaving the cat. It sounds like it. God, this extended cutscene's going on a while. Oh, we're popping some miscellaneous pills. I too pop pills in the morning.
Okay, day number two. Let's see if today goes slightly better than yesterday. I wonder if we see our good friend Hal again today. I'm kind of missing him. Ooh, he seems to be in a little bit late today. Hey, pal. So, tell me, how'd day number one at the FDI go? Everything you had hoped for? Fucking awful. Supervisor Skinner definitely doesn't like me. Yeah, well, I wouldn't worry about him. Xavier doesn't even like his own mother. To be honest, no, I, I probably shouldn't say anything. Ooh, tell me, give me the gossip. I like a bit of workplace gossip. Well, between you and me, we're thinking of making a change at the supervisor position. You know, Evan, if you play your cards right, maybe, just maybe. Ah, sorry, buddy. My phone's ringing off the hook here. I gotta run. But hey, great job. And uh, just, just keep plugging away, okay? I'm proud of you, Evan. Okay, this makes me want to work hard so I can take his job. Oh, here he is. I'm coming for your career, mister. Operator Tanner, Agent Pendle has an update on yesterday's case. I'll patch her through in a moment. But before I do, I wanted to let you know that from this point on, you'll talk to the agents directly. Time to cut the umbilical cord. However, as your supervisor, I'll still be in the background monitoring your activity. Okay, sure. Right, let's answer this. Good morning, Operator Tanner. So you remember Ray Wells, right? Uh, Ray Wells? Who's that? I see you had a long first day too. Wells is the shooter who killed Henry Jenkins at the bar. Using his license plate number obtained from the video analysis system, you were able to make a positive ID on him. So I checked out the address. I have amnesia. I don't remember any of this. No sign of Wells. Then I get a call from Vice, and guess what? Wells was found dead in a downtown parking garage early this morning. Shot point blank range. Now I'm working two homicides, and it's my first week. Welcome to the FDI, Alexandra. Anyway, the garage has cameras, and I got some footage of Wells. That's the good news. The bad news? I don't have all the footage. Sort of weird, but part of it is missing. Ooh, okay. Has it been tampered with? I don't know. Looks that way, doesn't it? I don't put much stock into conspiracies, but the timing is definitely suspicious. Anyway, think you could take a look? I'm looking for anything that's different between the first and second half of the surveillance footage. Apart from Wells ending up dead and the blood splatter on the pillar. Sorry for the vivid details. Ooh, okay. Let's have a look at this. Ooh, okay. What's different? So that's what it looks like before it cuts out. Is there anything that changes? I mean, everything looks the same. Am I just blind? Like, I'm really not seeing anything here. Uh, I mean, he's bleeding in the second half. Um, I, I, I mean... Yes, he's bleeding on the floor. Oh god, this guy's We're really gonna hate me. anything that's different between the two halves of the footage operator. Apart from what Agent Pendle said about Wells and the blood splatter. Anything that's different at all. I mean, same amount of lights are on. There's no change to the floor. The cars are all the same. Oh, this is really hard. I, I don't know if I'm stupid. I genuinely cannot see a difference between these two frames. Oh God, it's not giving me the option to click anything. Ooh, I can scan him. Okay. Yep. Yeah, okay, we know it's him. That's not really what I'm asking. Okay, whatever this is, can I scan something here? Okay, what is that? What is? What have I noticed? Okay, the, what do you mean the light's off in the second part? Oh, come on, I did not notice that at all. Look at that. Give me a sec, operator. I'm gonna check this out. Well, well, well. I just found a bullet lodged in the light's framework. I'm sending you a photo. Can you run an analysis and tell me what kind of bullet I'm looking at? Uh, okay. That's a very good photo, considering you just took that. Oh, here we go. It says the name here. God, I'm really slow. It's a 45 caliber round. 45 caliber? I believe that's what the military and police use. Well, that's something anyway. Thanks for your help, operator. Appreciate it. If only we had all of the footage. Anyway, I should get back to the scene. Keep digging and see if you can find anything else about our perp. Oh, okay. I can find out more info on him. Right, let's have a quick look. Oh, how? What do you want? Oh, let's be really uh, off with him. Okay, I could do with some friends. That'd be nice. Okay, he wants to make a deal. You know what? Yeah, let's take it. We want the new supervisor role after all. Do we act corrupt to make a deal? So we can either say we can't do anything illegal. Let's just ask how he can help us. Ooh. Okay, we have the footage we need. 
How did you get it? Okay, that's just patronizing. You know what? I want this promotion. Let's do this. Okay, they're gonna put in the extra bit of the video. Oh, but when this looks suspicious, that's a good point. Okay, right. This is a little bit fishy, but we'll go along with it. I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm making a deal with a criminal. I wonder, has Pendle just been waiting this entire time on the phone? <laughs> oh, this doesn't feel safe. I don't know if I trust this guy. Collect my debt. Oh, shit. Okay, I shouldn't have done this. Right, okay. This is hopefully going to show us who the killer was then. Ooh. Okay. So we've got another car pulling up. Right, okay. So I'm thinking we need to analyze who this is. Okay, we have a face. I see that you ran the facial recognition software and zero matches turned up, operator. That's unusual. In fact, it shouldn't even be possible. Our FDI databases are exhaustive. I'll flag this issue for later, but go ahead and share the image with Agent Pendle. Okay, we'll send the image to her. Uh, this isn't much use, it's a bit of a generic NPC looking fella. In fact, it looks like Agent 47 from Hitman a little bit. Wait, I don't understand. How did you get this? Um, 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 a magician never tells his secrets. <laughs> well, this is huge. Thanks, Tanner. I'll canvas the area immediately. Maybe someone has seen our Prince Charming. I'll talk to you later. And thanks again. Oh, I feel dirty for doing this. But yeah, just doing my job, Agent. Yeah, I'm just so good. Oh, God, no. What does Hal want? Oh, let's just get it over with. Okay, he's been talking to another agent. How do I actually do this? Okay, terminal. Can I just copy and paste? Oh, God, I can't. Oh, I have to type this? Oh, that sucks. Okay, it's a bit annoying that I have to type all of this out, but oh well. Okay, I've managed to do it. I've managed to type. I'm so proud of myself. Hello, Operator Tanner. Hal told me that you'd be calling. What's this all about? Yeah. Okay, I'll try to keep this short. About a month ago, I started working on a missing persons case. A woman reported that her husband had been gone for over 48 hours. Almost right away, the case felt different. Red tape all over the place. An unusual lack of cooperation from my superiors and colleagues. Unanswered calls. Suddenly, the FDI felt like the most incompetent department in the country. After an almost endless game of phone tag, I finally managed to get an appointment with a superior. The plan was to sit down and talk about the case first thing Monday morning. That Sunday night, I'm awoken by a phone call. The woman's apartment has burned to the ground. And the woman, what's left of her anyway, has been found dead in the ashes. Ooh, cheeky bit of corruption going on here. Could just be a coincidence. God, that'd make me sound really thick, but I'm actually interested, so I want to see what she did. So I started looking into the fire, of course. I, I couldn't help myself. Plus, I felt like I owed it to Mia. That was the woman's name, Mia Cole. Anyway, it wasn't long before my superiors found out and pressured me to stop. They told me the fire had been ruled accidental, the result of faulty wiring in her oven. They told me I was wasting my time and precious FDI resources by looking into it, and said if I continued, I'd end up pushing papers in a basement somewhere. But that fire, Operator Tanner, that fire was no accident. I can feel it. Mia was murdered. I just have to prove it. That's why I'm hoping you can help me. Hmm. I don't know whether to ask. How do you know it wasn't an accident? Or, yeah, why would Hal help you with this? Uh, I'm sorry, but I can't really go into that. Not uh, now, yeah, anyway. okay. Leave me on you the outside. You just have to trust me. Go ahead and search them in the human DB. The husband's name is Sasha. Sasha and Mia Cole. Please. Uh, okay, right. Surely if she's an FBI agent, she should be able to search this. Right, we'll try Sasha first. Okay, there's nothing here. Can't view anything. I'm guessing it's going to be the same for Mia. Okay, we have a picture this time and some information, but yeah, nothing. Just another coincidence, right? Look, I don't know why, but someone doesn't want us looking into Sasha and Mia Cole. But we have to, Operator Tanner. It's our job. Who's going to do it if we don't? Can you help me find proof Mia's fire wasn't an accident? Uh, uh, do I have to? You'll take a look then? Oh, thank you. As far as how to access the case files, that's not really my area of expertise. Oh, but sure. Leave how. it to me. 
Okay, right. So it's looking like he's gonna be able to help us use a bug to get in, but... Uh, okay, just more work for us, I see. Oh, wait, whoa, what? Sorry, I don't understand what that means, Tanner. Uh, what? The chat with Andrews? What? I don't understand. What, what are you asking me to do? Despite being, well, a thorn in the side, you have to admit how it gets results. Okay, I, I don't know what I've done. I just sent something. Okay, right, we get a summary of the case here. Okay, the fire started at 2 a.m. and was contained by 12 minutes past 3. A single victim identified as Mia Cole. Okay, they've redacted who it was reported to. Okay, they found their ring. A wedding picture that only shows her. Okay. And ash samples. Okay. Okay, this means I can now check this. Okay. Oh my god, more reading. Ah, oh, this, this. I don't like this job. I don't understand what you're asking me to do here. Oh, brain hurt. <laughs> this is so difficult. Ah, oh, I'm not a very clever guy. I just kill zombies for fun. Okay, we have to open the sample in the dedicated ChemScan LCA software. Input the appropriate setting for your sample using the formulas found thereafter. Start the analysis. No, da, 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 da. yeah, cool. Input the results from the ChemScan LCA. Oh my god, this is so long winded. What? Oh god, oh, my brain is too small for this. Okay, it's an ash sample. Did it say anything about that? Okay, weight in gram times 250. So 4.2 grams times 250. Okay, All right. Oh, we do have a calculator. So 4.2, what does it say? Times 250. Uh, 250 equals 1050? What? Okay, so this is apparently 1,050. Okay, now we need to work out the iron size. Okay, the iron size. Uh, okay, is it a liquid? No, it's solid. It must not exceed 1.3. I guess just 4.2, if I'm going to guess. God, I probably seem so stupid to you guys right now. Okay, threshold. The threshold value depend on the delta V and the sample type. Oh, oh hold on. I've just realized this is non-organic. I got the previous bit wrong. Okay, non-organic. Oh, it was only times 100. Got you. So 4.2 times 100. Okay, so the delta V is actually 420. I misread it. It's non-organic. So 420, blaze it. Now the threshold half of the delta v so half delta v that's 120 okay sample matrix size okay the default is five you must uh, set the size to four are we using an older version okay no we're using the newer vault version so that means this should be set to five right is that correct nope the threshold and iron size is wrong okay so what are the other options it's not a liquid okay it, it's not a gaseous thing either though so let's try if it's liquid then is it it's one third. So I bring this up. Uh, God, I didn't think I'd be doing maths today. 420 divided by three, and we'll see if that's correct. Oh God, which one's the divide button? <laughs> oh no. Oh, there we go. So 140. Let's see if 140 is correct. Yeah, it's not 140. Okay, so is it a gaseous one set to twice the delta V, which would make it 840? No, what what am I doing wrong here? Okay, set to half of the delta V. Okay, so that is 210. What did I put earlier if it's not 210? Okay, it's 210. I, oh, God. <laughs> oh, my brain is so small. Right, now I just need to work out the iron size. Okay, it's non-organic, so that means this is set to 6. God, brain small and brain hurt. Okay, I did it. I'm so proud of myself. I did basic maths. Okay, we've got the results. Let's see. Um, what does this mean? Uh, just, there you go. Okay, that didn't solve anything. Okay, we've now analyzed the sample. Open, okay, the data report. Okay, that makes sense. Right, let's open the data report. Uh, what did he say? <laughs> God, I need to close some of these. It's getting confusing now. How, what did you say? Okay, and how to read the results. Okay, here we go. The chemical scan LCA will give, as a result of the analysis, a frequency response curve and additional sample characteristics such as pH, radioactivity, etic. Those values are going to be used by the CSLCA data report. Okay, right. Open the CSLCA data report software and input the CCVT. Oh, brain hurt, brain small. Oh, don't tell me I've closed the thing I needed as well. Okay, where's the... Oh, God, I think I closed the tab that had the results on it. Oh no. Um. 
Oh no, here we go. Here we go. I found it again. So, input the CCVT. Okay, where do I see that? Okay, 901. And the pH is 6.5. Okay, let's calculate this. Oh, fuck. I need to put the frequencies in. So, okay, I'm guessing when it stops being green, maybe? I'm just going to try 1.54, 2.42, 9.26, 10.6. No, okay, I got it wrong. I checked the manual. Don't patronize me. Yes, I understand this part. But like, no. <laughs> okay, the highest, the lowest. You can use the mouse to pointer to calculate the frequency. I know, but it's just not accurate at all. It's all over the place. What I, I don't understand. Why can't I just click it here? Like, seriously? Let's try 1.5. Oh, wait, if I just hover it on the tip here. 1.54, 2.44, 9.25, and 10.6. No, I don't... <laughs> God. Ah. I guess we're just finding the peaks. So 1.64. Okay, right. Now we're cooking. We'll just hover along. 2.68, 2.69, 2.7. Okay, 2.7. Okay, 9.31, 9.45, 10.64. Okay, I, I can't do this. Two hours later. Oh, I even tried to cheat and Google it and I couldn't find the answer. Wait, I have to put them in in order. Oh my God, I can't read. I'm so stupid. Okay, I've put them in order. And that's still wrong, for God's sake. Okay, so I've clearly just got these wrong. One eternity later. I don't get this, oh my God. Why does this one equal 10, but this one's nine? I don't get it. I'm really stuck for where I'm going wrong here. 2.7, unless it's like directly in the middle of the spike. Right, let's just see if I get it directly on the spike. So 9.25, let's try this. 2.45, 1.54, No way. Oh my God, I think I've done it. Yes, oh my God. I've proven it, there was gas used, oh my God. I knew it, faulty wiring might, you know what, this was no accident. Someone oh, started this fire. That they took me Mia. way too long. But why? Uh, yeah, what are you gonna do now? Maybe Come on. I'll end up at a desk in a dark basement somewhere, but I'm going to keep digging into this. It, cool, just it don't make it my problem. Me. I grew to know her. Mia, I mean. With our line of work, you try not to get emotionally involved. That's what they teach you at the academy, anyway. Almost from the start. And usually, I can turn Ooh. the switch off. I learned to do that. Feel nothing. Uh, we're going a bit lightheaded. Are you still there? Uh, sorry, the acid just kicked in. Uh, I don't know what happened. Oh, anyway, thanks, operator. Because of you, I finally have proof. Knowing how, well, as much as someone can know how, I have a feeling this won't be the last time you and me work together. Oh, I don't know about that. I'm ready to hand my P45 in. Okay, can I go home now? Yep, yeah, we did find the evidence. Okay. Someone has faith in me, that's nice. There must be a good reason they haven't handled the case, yeah. What's going on? See, you're a skeptic, that's good. We can use that, Evan. Look, it's probably still don't trust me, you know? Uh, I mean, yeah, probably not. A good idea to trust you. I'm on the FDI Most Wanted list. Wait, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Where do I find that list from earlier? To get that reward. Ooh, that's a good idea, actually. Oh, okay, my director's calling me. Operator Tanner, can I have a word? Uh, yeah, okay. I see that you've uh, been looking into the database entries for Mia and Sasha Cole. You want to tell me why? Oh, uh, do we tell them about how? Let's lie. I see. In the future, I want you to avoid anything related to Sasha and Mia Cole. Ooh. It's a closed case. A total waste of your time. And if by chance something else pops up concerning the Coles, and this is very important, 
you come to me right away. Understood? Hmm. What's the big deal about them? Yeah. Oh, there's no deal, Evan. It's just highly confidential, classified, and way above your pay grade. Ah, uh, sure Mike, go fuck yourself. Yeah, dodgy. Don't like you. Oh, okay. He's gonna tell us something about him. Ooh. He was in the FDI. Okay, right. I think that is the end of day number two. Oh, no, our day isn't over just yet. God, it's five to five. I'm just ready to go home at this point. Oh, what do you want, Barry? So who the hell am I talking to this time? Ah, it's us again. Good. You haven't been fired. I was well, afraid I'd I'm have to explain this goddamn case all over again. I went back to where Connie I'm said just as surprised as you for not being fired, Barry. You remember, right? Where she said this um flying saucer supposedly landed. I didn't find a flying saucer or any aliens breathing their last wheezy breaths or anything like that. But I did find something else. Ooh, what did you find? I found that too, Tanner. Mm, but no. That's not what I meant. I found stones. A bunch of stones lying there on the surface of the sand. I'm no uh, geologist, but they look funny to me. Like they've been moved, put there for a reason, you know? So, I call it in. Because I'm sure as hell not gonna dig myself, Tanner. Not in this suit. A team arrives an hour later, and they start digging. Sure enough, under one of the stones, they find a body. Advanced state of decomp. They dig under another stone. And lo and behold, this time they find an entire skeleton. Turns out, we're standing on some sort of desert graveyard. Ooh. Yeah, how many corpses are out there? Hard to say, but I counted more than a hundred stones. If they're all grave markers, well, I'll let you do the math. Yeah, messed up, right? And judging by the size of the skeleton, it belonged to someone young, Tanner. Real young. Look, I won't beat around the bush. The medical examiner has finished a preliminary report on the skeleton, and they found what they believe is a photo of the victim in the sand, buried there by the bones. Never seen that before. Any chance you can take a look at all this and get me an ID, Tanner? Okay, right, let's give Let this a go. the files. Well, it's taken a while. Hard to access the satellite out here in Roswell. I mean, uh, dry field. Okay. Looks like it went through. About goddamn time. Right. Let's have a look at this. Mm, the skeleton appears to be female. Estimated at mm, nine years of age. Starting the examination now. Initial observations show well-preserved and intact bones. No visible signs of trauma or damage. The subject is missing her left incisor. The rest of the dentition looks good. No decay or disease is present. Moving on. Here's something interesting. One of the metacarpal bones on her left hand, the metacarpal three, has a slight curvature. You don't see that a lot. So, to summarize, the subject appears to have been a female, approximately nine years of age, with a missing left incisor tooth and a slight curvature in the metacarpal three in her left hand. Based on the level of decomposition, the body appears to have been buried for approximately six to eight months. Further testing and analysis is needed to determine the cause of death. Well, this just got very dark. We found a nine-year-old's body. Okay, who are you? Henry Jenkins, 65. Again, I don't have access to this. That's annoying. Yeah, that looks like it could be the first name. But I'll need the last name too. I'm thorough like that. Dr. Jenkins, okay. Oh, here we go. Perfect, he's got a name tag. Here we go, Henry Jenkins. Oh my god, go away, Skinner. Jenkins. That name rings a bell, operator. Check the other cases for anything possibly related to him. Maybe there's a clue in there tied to the girl. Okay, maybe. Name list. Surely he is on here. My god, do I have to really read all of these? Okay, I really thought we'd find the name on here. Oh, I can search the name. Okay, the name isn't on this list. 
Wait, maybe. Felicity, like the name up here? Wait, Gabby. Welcome to the facility, Gabby. Okay, so we're looking for a Gabby. Okay, is there a Gabby on the list here? Okay, there are two Gabbies. Okay, Gabby Bruce. How did you find this, Tanner? Okay, I managed Just to piece it together. Think, this case can't get any weirder. That's exactly what it does. But I need concrete proof it's her. Got anything else in your bag of tricks? There must be an element that could tie the skeleton found in this Gabby Bruce. Examine the autopsy report and see if you could find anything there linking them. Okay, human database. Let's see, Gabby Bruce. Female, nine, blue, okay. Here we go. Evidence, the growth. That was listed in the uh, autopsy. I'll be damned. Nine years old, Tanner. Breaks your goddamn heart. What the hell is going on out here? And what's the connection to Connie? Okay, the examiner has just finished processing the second body I was telling you about. The one in the advanced state of decay. Let's see here. Adult male, early 60s. Ah, they got an ID on him. Quentin Spence. Want to see if that name is on your magical list too? Okay, right, let's see if Quentin Spence is on this name list. Quentin Spence, there it is. Yeah, he's right here. So there's definitely a link. I see some of the names have been crossed out. Can you figure out what that business means? Oh, what the fuck? I mean, they're going to be dead, aren't they? Right, I think the most simple thing to do here will be human database. Uh, let's just start with, like, Caden Thomas. I mean, they're all missing. Looks to be about a hundred names like that. That number matches the stones. God damn. And if I was a gambling man... I'd say the circled persons are still alive, like our Connie. There's something else about Spence, Tanner. Okay, we could be onto a serial killer, maybe? They found him buried in a lab coat. With some, uh, you're never gonna guess. Floppy disk sewn into one of the pockets. Remember what I said about this case getting weirder and weirder? I'm sending everything your way. Now the second disk, password protected. Open that second floppy disk. And give me an address tied to Spence. Something I can look into. I'm getting a little restless with you doing all the work. The operator program. Oh. Dude, shut up. Okay, how am I supposed to know the password? Okay, right, we do have the codes here. The symbols and file names written on the second floppy disk look to be there for a reason, Tanner. Oh. I suggest checking those two files for clues about the password. Focusing on the symbols. Maybe keep those two files open and see if you can do something with them. Oh god, I hate this guy. Okay, let's listen to the autopsy report. Autopsy report of a male. Approximately late 50s, early 60s. Initial observations show no sign of trauma or blood force injury. Similar to the first remains found. Student appears to be wearing some kind of lab coat. Starting the external examination now. Excellent dentition. The decedent is wearing some kind of badge. Let me put this to the side. Abdomen seems healthy, with no signs of trauma or injuries. The lab coat seems to contain a hidden pocket. There's something inside. It's sewn shut. I'll open this with my scalpel. There. There appear to be two floppy disks inside the pocket. Strange. In my estimate, the body has been buried for approximately two to three months, based on the level of decomposition. At this point, the cause of death is uncertain. Further testing and analysis is needed, including toxicology reports, before I can provide a conclusive determination. Okay, there's some sort of code here. One, two, three, space, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, it says on res two, Okay, we've got a bit of a study here from him. Uh, we do have this file here first as well. To unlock the full potential, 66.72. Okay, these must be the numbers that we need, maybe? God, I'm having to take pictures on my phone just so I understand what I'm looking at. <laughs> the key and lock icons, operator. They must be important. I suggest you combine them to reproduce the schematics on the second floppy disk. My hunch is that the content is not very important. Just the part with the icons and the two files mentioned. 
FMP 1138 and res 2. Res 2, so I don't need to bother reading any of this. I just need this other section here. Okay, I, I thought this would be a little bit more apparent, but no. To unlock the files, here we go. So we've worked it out. We've put the two together. To unlock the files, use 105 endane, I believe that says. God, brain huge, brain massive. Okay, let's try this as the password. Oh, hell yeah. Now we've got his confession. If you're reading this, it means I'm no longer living and that I've been buried in the Dryfield Desert. Okay, so we knew he was going to be buried there. Okay, he's the head of operations at BioM facility. We know that already. Okay, everyone buried as a Project Eve test subject led by Henry Jenkins. Okay, we've got the address of the facility. I'll let it go to your operator head, but that was actually somewhat impressive, Tanner. The address you sent? It's not far from here. I'll check it out first thing in the morning. Oh, Tonight, you're so dead. I think I'll help the team exhume the rest of these bodies. Screw the suit. God help us, Tanner. God help every single one of us. Okay. Well, we're coming to the end of day number two. us all if you don't rein him in yes his shift is over yes all right yeah, fine we'll talk later bye Ooh, skinner's a dodgy man Okay, well, it looks like we're at the start of day number three. Now, I think for us, this is where we're going to leave it for today. I'm interested to see how you guys receive this and whether you would like to see a part two where we look at days three and four and look to continue the story. Uh, this game seems really interesting. I'm enjoying it so far for my simple little chimp brain. I'm just about managing to piece things together, but I've been sat here for a while filming and I feel like I need a break. So, like I said, if you would like to see a part number two, let me know down in the comments. We'll see how this video does. And if you have enjoyed, please do consider liking the video. Do subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.